name is Joe Voss. I am a member of the board of the Hospice of Michigan Foundation. And uh, Hospice of Michigan is a statewide organization that provides hospice care to uh, everyone who needs it. And so at the foundation, we're sort of in charge of making sure that um, there's enough money to actually serve all the patients that come to Hospice of Michigan. And a couple of unique things about Hospice of Michigan, um, one is that uh, there's a, an open access policy, which means everybody who um, needs hospice care, regardless of uh, their diagnosis or their ability to pay, are treated and no one's ever turned away. The front lines of hospice care come um, really f from a couple of places. One of the first places is the nursing staff um, and Hospice of Michigan works to make sure that um, you know there's actually a pipeline of nurses that come into uh, and specialize in hospice care and so that's a that's a there's a critical commitment there. So this is the nursing, the doctors and then another place is volunteers um, and I think even you know, the clinical folks on the doctor and nurse side will say, um, if pressed, the real front lines are what uh, the volunteers do for the patients that are cared for by Hospice of Michigan. I am Jordan McCaskin and I am a registered nurse with Hospice of Michigan. I am a recent, recent graduate of Grand Valley and I just went through the nursing residency program that we have here at Hospice. Um, so that means that my education was funded by donors like you and I have been able to work here and go through this opportunity um, because of donations. And this also speaks to Hospice of Michigan's, um, we're on the forefront of research and really uh, building hospice as a career and as an idea and um, helping society understand death and how we process death. Hospice care is a form of medicine that focuses on comfort care at the end of life. We have a very interdisciplinary team uh, that includes nurses, social workers, chaplains, and uh, volunteers. We also use quite a bit of volunteers as well as home health aides. And those are really the two professions that are on the forefront helping the patient in the home. We service you wherever your home is, whether that's at a long-term care facility or your home. Um, we've even had patients that are homeless that we've had to go down and treat at homeless shelters. That uh, is a pretty pretty critical linchpin of, of why Hospice of Michigan is unique and good. Um, and also, it drives the need for us to raise money. Uh, that the, the fact that um, other hospices for-profit and some non-profit hospices uh, don't seek out those folks that are more difficult to treat um, because of cost issues uh, means that we need to make sure that there's money enough to pay for that care. And Hospice of Michigan has undertaken to do that and is committed to doing that and so there's always a need for support. That's been a very unique part to me in working for Hospice of Michigan to be able to serve anyone regardless of their ability to pay or um, just regardless of their diagnosis, family situation, home situation, and all of those different things. So between the, the team here, we visit um, nursing visits weekly and we take care of medical needs. We also have a physician that is over that we can provide to our patients that is certified in hospice care. Another unique thing about Hospice of Michigan is that we do have uh, many board certified physicians that are specific to hospice and palliative care and as well as uh, our pediatric team that has also specialized in pediatrics and is a very unique program as there's only um, a select number even in the country of programs that are specific to pediatrics. So our team comes in and treats your medical needs, your social needs. Um, help with planning funeral arrangements, advanced directives, and hospice has also worked a great deal toward um, encouraging families to discuss all of these things before uh, the time occurs. So how do we get conversations going about advanced directives and what you would wish for treatment should anything happen to you? Um, and this, this was very personal to me um, because my dad was sick with cancer and did pass away in 2001 on hospice care and it really helped our family. We also have a great grief support team that follows you for 13 months after you lose your family member, which is great because we can follow the entire family, especially if there's young children involved, make sure that they're coping appropriately, and just making sure that the family is getting the support that they need socially, emotionally, um, and 
you know, just helping them navigate a world that they've likely never dealt with before. So that is also a benefit to our program, that, that special layer of support. Um, I usually, we nurses have a caseload depending on um, our census. It depends on the census. We can range from 18 to about 24 to 26 patients. And we'll just go see them day to day. Um, we usually come about once a week. We increase visits toward the end of life or if there are additional needs that are not met, symptoms that are not treated. And we just kind of work on the forefront to help the families navigate all of the things that naturally occur at end of life, as well as I would say the biggest part of my job is education and just teaching families what is normal, what isn't, um, and, and how do we be proactive about treating those symptoms as well as how do we cope with them when they are occurring. So I'll go see patients day to day about, um, depending on four to six patients a day or so. Um, and then we're also available, we work in a real case management fashion. And that means that we're um, seeing the same patient. There's a lot of consistency within who we're seeing uh, in addition to that we build a relationship with the family and there's a lot of um, trust built there. So we also have a 24 seven staff, which is pretty great as well. And so if your loved one has trouble at three o'clock in the morning, we do have on-call nurses that can be there within an hour to help you and your family um, navigate that time and to, to treat any of those symptoms that may occur. Our um, care center is very unique and that's where you would call um, to either have uh, someone looked at for admission or just to make the referral anything like that and they are 24 7 and that's a nursing staff as well so there's a lot of things that can be done just on the phone to get your loved one comfortable right away and that's a pretty great thing to me it, I think it gives a family a lot of comfort and takes a lot of the fear uh, away from this I think the important piece of hospice is that almost every one of us is here because we have a personal story from the nurses to the board members and, and many of our donors um, have come to us because they want to give back because of what we have given to their families. And my personal story speaks to that. And I think we um, just thank everyone that has contributed, whether they've spent time helping arrange flowers to, to take to our patients, or they have you know, come and just sat by someone at the end of life. All of those things we really um, depend on and need and, and thank all of our donors um, from the bottom of our hearts and, and as do our patients. And, I think that's the, the beautiful message that we have here is that we are just so well supported by this community and um, our needs are, are continuing to be met by our community and it's just, it's a beautiful thing. Death is one thing that ties every person together. We're constantly as humans trying to solve that riddle. There are good deaths and, and there are not so good deaths and uh, Hospice of Michigan really exists to make sure that people have control and can sort of write the terms of their last act.